So, Ben, it sounds like Johnson & Johnson has problems beyond their uh, liquid children's Tylenol. It seems like every time you turn around, it's another Johnson & Johnson problem. Now it's their Depew uh, orthopedic hip, hip replace. I mean, worldwide recall. This is a big problem for Johnson. Huge, involving almost 100,000 people. And, you know, they want to make it something smaller than it is, and they've hidden it from the public for the last two years. We know they have evidence going back at least to the end of 2007 that this was a problem in Australia, and so they stopped the studies and, and stopped marketing the product over there, uh, going around trying to quietly settle the cases before people could find lawyers. Yeah, let's talk about that. First of all, here, here the, the company clearly knows that they have a problem two years before they did anything, virtually before they did anything. Let's talk about this fraud. What what did they know? What did they cover up? What What is it that should have been like a, a red flag being well, waved well, in the FDA's face? Well, we've seen, and this is the tip of the iceberg, because we really don't know what all they knew, but we have seen necrotic dying tissue in people's hips because of something called metallosis. Metallosis is a new phenomenon caused by these metal-on-metal implants that are disintegrating in people's hips, leading to particulate amounts of metal flaking off and circulating in people's bodies, causing high levels in the blood and the urine in these people of chromium and cobalt, two heavy metals that, uh, you know, like lead and the others that we've seen damage children and, and people. Uh, our clients are being exposed to circulating levels of heavy metals in their blood, and the company just keeping it quiet and saying it's not a problem. Well, I mean, the the, the problem, the, I mean, the bigger problem here is you're almost, you have to make a decision. You have this in your body. You know about the process of metallosis. There, there's scientists saying, yes, it's real. It's a physical problem that people can develop uh, systemic problems from that. And so, so then you're left with this implant in your body, and you say, well, you know, should I have it taken out? It, it, it's kind of a real tough decision because the implant surgery is so, so right. I mean, it's tough surgery. It, it, they put these people surgery. into a catch-22, but it, it shouldn't be a tough uh, answer to get them fully compensated. And what Depew and what Johnson & Johnson want to do is they want to say, yeah, we gave you a bad product. We're sorry. We'll pay for your medical bills when you have to undergo the knife again and again. We've got people who have had five and six surgeries because this is so damaging. This metallosis is so damaging to the hip socket that these people end up with insufficient bones. Some of them are going to have to have a fused leg, a fused spine because mm. of this failure. Okay, and so we look at the story. The story is these failures are taking place uh, one out of eight people, I think, who, who've had the ASR implant. They, and and they, that's all we know about, that's 12 the or 13%. Yeah, the, it could yeah, be more. Well, that's what the company's saying, you right, see. Right. And so anytime the company says it, we usually take it and multiply it by about four. So so they, they should be able to uh, have these implants last for 15 years or longer. But if they get five years with this, it's remarkable, isn't it? It, it is. And, and they know that's what they're saying. The, the failure rate at five years or in less than five years is 13 percent. And, you know, what they've stood behind for a long time is, well, this isn't a long term problem because they've had people that are in their 70s and 80s getting these hip implants. And many of them didn't live long enough to tell the tale that needs to be told here. Now they're marketing these things to athletes and to 30 and 40 and 50 year olds who are going to get three, four, five years and have to go through this operation again and again. It's criminal. And there's only so many times you can have the operation, both both because of uh, both because of scar tissue that develops. Uh, and as you point out, the bone socket itself, there's only so much tissue there that they can work with. And it, when it gets to the point, it is, it is fusion is the only thing that, that's uh, available. Look, look, the, here's what's really ugly about this. I mean, there's so many ugly parts. But first of all, the company understands for two years that they got a problem. They suggest, though, to doctors that they, well, they're just getting out of the business. They want to pull the product off the market. They don't really want to. It's not because they're worried about anything. They simply don't want to have it out there because they say, well, gee whiz, it's it's not. Uh, it, we're just moving out of this industry. Our sales are disappointing. Sales are disappointing. Well, truthfully, their, sa their sales were in the billions, so we know it wasn't that. And the, the, the other thing they know is that the FDA had had 400-plus complaints, of very serious complaints. On top of that, then Depew does something really unscrupulous. They give doctors releases, and they tell, they tell the doctor when a patient shows up, have them sign this release before you do anything to, to relieve their pain. If somebody shows up, they've got inflammation, they've got tissue damage, they've got problems that are causing real, real pain. We want you to make sure they sign this to release us 
before you, you do anything to take them out of their horrific pain. It really is ugly conduct. You know, they want to say, oh, we're trying to do the right thing. We're trying to pay for their medical bills and treatment to get them a new hip implant. And that's why we need this medical release. But what they're really doing is they're building their case. They're taking these releases and, who are drafted by lawyers, and they're sending them to the defense lawyers so the defense lawyers can find alternative explanations, other reasons that this thing went wrong. And, you know, when, when there's not. I mean, it's obvious. They know it's a problem, but they get them to sign this release so these people have a false sense of security, and they won't let them get treatment. Th- think of where the patient is left, okay? This is the doctor who didn't know. They, if you think about it, the doctor, most doctors didn't know that Depew was such a horrible product. They didn't know it was so, so shoddily made that it would cause these kind of problems. So the doctor does what a doctor should do. He puts it in. He does a good job as a surgeon. But then all of a sudden, patient comes back. The doctor still doesn't know about the real backstory on Depew. And the doctor unknowingly then tells the patient, Look, I'm not going to treat you. If you don't sign this release, I'm not going to treat you. What does the patient do? The patient's in pain. As I said, they got tissue damage. They got bone damage. They got chronic pain. And what they're really doing is they're inviting the doctor to be sued. The doctor, day one, is not really a target of the lawsuit. Now, the Johnson & Johnson knows they can get the doctor involved in the suit by making them sign this release. You know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that they're they're uh, acting in this way and, and, and allying with the doctors to do the same thing. I mean, like you said, they're getting paid. They've made plenty of money on this product. They're still making more money uh, on these products, and yet they're not willing to do the right thing. They're quietly trying to get people to settle for five cents on the dollar to just get there. In fact, they're telling people, well, if your insurance company pays for it, that that's fine. They'll take care of that. Otherwise, we'll just pay for your replacement. Not giving people anything for their pain and suffering, their loss of enjoyment of life, and they're making the doctors co-conspirators with them. They're telling, telling doctors, hey, you took this, you put this thing in, take it out for us, cut us a deal, we'll pay your surgery costs. So the doctor gets paid twice. Now, okay, so so the person is left, uh, many of these individuals have these revision surgeries. They, they require canes, they require, require walkers. Uh, they're, they're permanently crippled. I mean, the rest of their life, they at least could have gotten around had they put the right implant in, but with Depew, now they're crippled. Yeah, and, and you know, two things. I mean, one, they're marketing the product to people that they say, we can give you a brand new lease on life. You can have a product that is going to allow you to get back on the dance floor, back on the basketball court, back on the golf course, and instead they're rendering these people injured for life with, like you said, canes and walkers and crutches. And and add to that, they're they're giving them a product with no known efficacy that turns out it breaks down, causes metal to spread throughout their bodies, and poses a risk of cancer and other unknown systemic diseases when there's no there's no evidence to support the product in the first well, place. Well, here's a story that's told over and over again in the device industry and in the pharmaceutical industry. It's like these MBA CEOs that come out of Harvard and Yale and Princeton, they all learn under the same book of tricks. I mean, you, and, and here it is. Here, here's the truth about what they do. They put a product out there. And, and they understand that the product, even if it has problems, they're going to keep it out there as long as they can. With no known efficacy. No, 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 no proven. And they're, they're, get, they're creating, getting into market for competition's sake and saying, we got a better, we, we build a better product here. And right. they have no, no, nothing to support that. So they do that. They keep it on the market as long as they can, even though there are plenty of competitor products that are much better. But the CEO then is paid bigger bonuses if they maximize profits for five or six years. Then in the old days, the CEO was there for 25 years, not now. Now the CEO is a short timer, wants to make huge profits in that short time. So he comes into the company, he maximizes his profits, he maximizes his bonus. And you know what? He's gone the next day. And that's what we see here time and time again. And Depew is almost, it it, it is the the, uh, textbook, the textbook story about how these companies make money in America nowadays. 